whatever it is that you're here to do in your life, whatever makes your heart sing, that's what is your purpose. The skulls um, are very special and, and they also connect to who is their guardian. And in a lot of ways, this crystal skull kind of projecting my energies because he's like a comedian. And when I give lectures, I throw him up in the air, can't throw him very far because he's 10 pounds. And everybody's going, what is Joshua doing? He's going to smash it, but I never drop him. So my purpose obviously is to be a speaker and a writer and you know, use all the gifts that I have and try to figure out how to combine them together to benefit whatever people I'm talking to in the moment. So after doing this for, I don't know, uh, what, over 36 years, there's no thinking about it. Somebody once asked me questions, talk, ah, the words come out. And um, one other experience I had with the most famous crystal skull, which is known as the Mitchell Hedges crystal skull. This is what we call an ancient crystal skull, meaning it was, I believe it was created in Atlantis. So it's gotta be at least 12,000 or 14,000 years old, probably older. Um, it helped me in a meditation I had with it. Uh, the same year the Indiana Jones film came out, I was interviewed by the Sci-Fi Channel in the United States. And so I was in the house of the owner of the Mitchell Hedges skull in Indiana. And he uh, let me come back a couple weeks later and I did a meditation. And there was, I don't know what happened. There was something that came in, in the room, a cosmic being beyond anything that you can imagine. Like when I talk to you, you're a unique individual. This was not just an individual. This is like a group of beings or a universe or a, a solar system, a huge, knew everything there was about me. But what happened is after this experience, I felt like my energy got shifted and I learned how to be in the neutral. And this is very important gift to have because most of us are taught as we grow up, if you don't like something someone says, you're supposed to get angry with them. No, you don't have to agree with what everyone else says. You do not have to follow what everyone else tells you. Even your parents, if they tell you something to do and you are, you know, it's not right. I teach people how to say a polite no, you know, because that's like giving your power away. So it was like the, the Mitchell Hedges go was changing my vibrational frequency and it helped me to get to the point where I just look at everyone and say they're beautiful, they're a child of God, and they have free will. And even though I may not agree with how they're living their life, they have the right to live that life and life will teach them the lessons they need to learn. Okay, because that's all life really is, is we have experiences. It's not about being right or wrong or who has the best information or you know who's the greatest teacher. You just live life, be yourself, and you know do the things that feel correct for you and if you do something that doesn't work it's not wrong you learn from the experience and you go i'm not going to do that again and so you don't and for, for some people they're going to keep repeating the same uh, experience over and over and over so from creator's perspective he he she has infinite patience with us as well that's what the person needs to do till they till they learn so that was another a gift I received from this girl's how to be in the neutral. If I'm doing something that really upsets someone else, I'm doing a good job because yes. I'm mirroring, mirroring back to them something about themselves they don't want to see. Okay. Now that's kind of a little arrogant because it means, and Katrina says this, you never apologize. You know, you don't think you make any mistakes or have problems. Well, the key is I just like myself and I do the best I can. And that's the simplicity. I mean, it's the same thing from a spiritual perspective. If you, you know, talk to people who are religious, they're going to think you're working with the devil. Yeah. This part, get away. You're working with the devil. I don't want to deal with you. And the thing is, is, you know, spirits coming inside and you're happy and you're sharing and people don't like that. Okay. You shouldn't be that way. You're too happy. You're too giving. You're too good. There's something wrong with you. So, you know, it's all 
based on unique perspectives. So that's why I say when you're in the neutral, you're not judging anyone else. You're just going, they want to be that way, fine. I, I could see a way they could be better, but they don't want to listen. So I'm not going to become offended. They're not ready. So I'll just send them love, good energy, God bless, you know, and then maybe sometime later they'll come back to you. You know what you were talking about 20 years ago, all this UFO stuff and crystal skull stuff and Bigfoot and all these paranormal things. They're starting to happen to me now. I got I to gotta understand this. Can you explain it to me? The ego is always there trying to find something wrong with the other person and and we miss the the nice part of the connection which is learning, you know, from and and sharing and expanding ourselves. I have uh three questions. So the first one is if you um if you felt like the different places like activate in your own uh energy field your own memories, memories that you already had from your past lives. And if you consider that in your past lives, your spirit was also um, connecting with the schools. And, and my third question will be, um, if um, talking about Atlantis, if you uh, recall uh, a past incarnation in Atlantis, working with the crystals and probably feeling or receiving the call nowadays for continuing with um, with your mission it started back in, in, in Atlantis time. Okay, so let's focus on Peru first. Cool. So definitely I was called to Peru. Um, the first time I went, I met was when I was living in California in the late 1980s. And, you know, like everyone else, I read about Peru and all the people having great experience and so on. So I happened to meet a man. I think he was Swiss, but he was living in Peru and he created a spiritual tour agency. I said, you know, I would love to go to Peru. And he said, well, you just let me know when you want to go. I have this tour agency and we'll just set up the whole thing. So, you know, I wanted to go to Machu Picchu, uh, Lake Titicaca, um, uh, Cusco, um, the lines of Nazca, you know, all these main places you hear about. Because for me, the key is the personal experience. You know, you can read about something, but when you go and you have the experience, and since I'm sensitive to the energies, okay? And one other thing I remember I went to was Dr. Cabrera had these stones with engraved images on it showing dinosaurs in an advanced race of beings that was said to be thousands of years old. So, you know, it's like, I gotta go, I gotta see all this stuff. So they helped me to do that. Of course, the challenge going to Peru is being that I, I've always been around modern cities, after you leave Lima, you're in uh, like a different planet. You know, it's everything's very primitive and amazing place as well. It has gigantic stone statues there of animals and people. So, you know, like Peru is a place that has survived with many things from ancient times. Okay, so I'll try to... So I was called to, to go there. So when I was in Cusco, my guide was saying some of the people there recognized me as an Inca. Okay, so it's possible I could have had a past life as an Inca. In another place that we went, um, I had a vision of being on like a flying saucer that came from Atlantis because they would have levitation craft. Their technology would be more advanced than what we see. But of course, the secret governments of the world have already been working with various galactic races and our technology is very high now. We have our own spacecraft and we're having contact with Galactus and this has been going on for almost 30 years. Uh, so I had a vision of being on a flying ship, taking sacred artifacts from Atlantis because Atlantis was being uh, submerged under the water. This must have been when it when it sank and bringing them to Peru. And then 
uh, being aware that in a future lifetime, I would be drawn back to possibly bring these things out. Because this is what I think happens for a lot of people who feel a connection with Atlantis or, or uh, past civilizations. They reincarnated now because they have in their DNA an energetic code that links them to these artifacts and for bringing our planet into total peace, which I know is we are in the process, these sacred tools are going to be starting to come out. That's why the crystal skulls are starting to come out now. They're... Now, what's strange about this blue crystal skull is I've written a 300-page book uh, about a crystal skull that I have not seen in the physical. Okay, it's from my memories. And to me, the skull is always sitting, I don't know, like right up here in this direction. Okay, it's right mm -hmm. there. And then when I'm talking to people, I show my right hand and I can feel the skull sit on it. And some people will put their hand on the go. Oh, this is an incredible energy. Okay. So it's like it's in what we would call the etheric energy level. It's just, you know, higher vibrational frequency. So you can't see it. You can't touch it. But because my inner sense, I feel energy, you know, it's like it's there and it's talking to me. Um, so I had many communications while I was, you know, traveling all over Peru, but especially when I went into the northern part of Peru, which mm -hmm. is pre-Inca cultures that most people don't go. We're talking about uh, an area high up in the Andes Mountains in Peru near the border with Colombia. There was uh, it, this place I went to was called the Laguna Negra, the Black Lagoon. And the local shamans go there and they do a ceremony speaking an ancient tongue. Okay, not just Spanish, speaking, um, I don't know, some ancient tongue in Peru. I think there's two or three dialects the Peruvians speak, like Quechua is one of them. And maybe it was speaking Quechua, I don't know. And, uh, you know, they do prayers and everything. But this is where I felt this crystal skull might be right now with... Like I was drawn to a, a mountain, a lagoon in front of a mountain. And I felt like inside the mountain, there was a city from descendants of Lemuria, like in Mount Shasta. Yes. And they were protecting the skull and they were in a different dimension. And the first time we went there, which was 1997, there were these young boys that came by. And of course I had a guide and they were saying, oh yeah, there was this old man, but he passed away and he kept talking about the city inside of the mountain. Okay. So somebody was contacting us because I went back and I spent like three days and two nights there and just had all kinds of strange things going on and visions and the whole thing. So um, I believe in an Atlantean lifetime that part of the reason why I'm drawn to go back to Peru is because I brought sacred tools there. I was part of a group that was on a, a levitating craft that brought those things because we could see in the future that this area of the world will still be preserved. So when humanity needs those sacred tools, then they will start coming out. Because really in Peru, there are only a few very modern cities and the rest of it is you know pretty much uh, na natural nature you know hasn't been destroyed like you know here in the United States pretty much we have a couple of states where you know there's large areas where nothing there are no large cities or development but for the most part the West Coast and East Coast you know everything is building cities and and all of that so uh, that was that would be part of my experiences in Peru. Um, so it would be going there from Atlantis, being connected with the Inca, and also being connected with a pre-Inca culture called, uh, uh, what is it called? It has to do with um, a ruler, the Mochica. There was a ruler called the Lord of Sipan. So I was guided to go to Sipan, which is an ancient city in the north. They found this ruler buried in a tomb with 12 layers of clothes and metal sandals. They think he never walked, he was always carried, but he was considered kind of like a god. And I had a past life with him, with this blue skull that was shown to me when I was there as well. So there is a book I have written 
unfortunately it's in English, you know, but I would like to see one day some of my books translated into Spanish um, that talks about three journeys to Peru looking for this blue skull, which of course I didn't find because it's still in the other energy level, but each trip I learned different things about it, and I kept going back to the Laguna Negra each time and then there were different experiences and other things that were revealed. One other thing I feel inspired to say about Peru is about Wilca Uta, which is in the the language speaking by the people in Lake Titicaca means the the doorway of the gods or the the gate of the gods. There is mm -hmm. a huge, huge stone door. I mean, this is huge. It has like a smaller door and a large door cut into the rock, which um, one of my friends who, you know, he, he has another tour agency that we worked with because we did a tour in 2009 and we had to go to this place again to have your own experience. Um, was unbelievable. I did a meditation with Portal de Luz and the other skulls were by the door, but he was at the door. And uh, I believe that this door, now this is going to throw your listeners totally off. They're going to know, no, now I totally believe Joshua is nuts. Yeah. Is, is the, the local people call it the gate of the gods because they've seen like tall hooded figures walk through the stone. Like they're coming from another dimension. Mm -hmm. Come out and go back in. And uh, my friend Jerry Wells was told by a shaman how to sing or tone. And he went through the door. And when he got there on the other side, he was like in a white room. And he heard a voice say, hey, you, what are you doing here? You don't belong here. What, how did you get here? Well, I, you know, I just started singing in front of this rock door and here I am. And then he saw some kind of construct held up by metal rods. And the person said, what you're seeing in front of you, that is a computer simulation of the universe you just came from. So he was told by the scientists on the other dimension, who obviously are these beings coming through, that they created our universe, that it's a computer simulation. So I have a free ebook that... Uh, I give out that talks about about this and I put that into the new edition of this book about Peru with the blue skull because mm -hmm. um, something happened to me there and I, I know that that's true I must and and the other thing is is on YouTube there was um, a video where it was said through like one of the online forums, there was this crazy person who showed up who said he was a computer programmer in another dimension and that the mandala effect, which is where people have different memories of things like these crazy changes to our reality, um, it makes sense that these programmers who could have created our, their, they keep changing it and the spiritual people's memories is not being affected by those changes. Have you heard about Erx, the um, astral city in uh, Argentina? No, I'm not familiar with it, but I have heard people talk about astral cities that are in the sky, so I don't know if it's one of those, that people who have the gift of vision, they're seeing a city in the sky which is like connected to the earth but it's in a different dimension because, yeah in a different dimension but the right. door gate is in Cerro Uritorco in Cordoba Argentina so this city is connected to all the other um, dimensional cities in the world with uh, Shambhala and it underground the city yes. then because yes. okay then it's part of the network. yeah I know about the Shambhala network of cities yes. um, I know about uh, uh, Telos in Mount Shasta. They've yeah. communicated with me there. And then one of the residents came out and she did a whole bunch of YouTube videos talking about all the other cities. So the mountain I went to, the northern part of Peru, I think that the city in the mountain is another one of those. It's another it's one, yes. Descendants of Lemuria is what it yes. felt like. And um, and then, of course, you have cities on the ground that are descendants of Atlanteans. And then you have the people that live in the ho hollow inside of the earth that also are connected to that network, too. 
and I've had um, you know contact or visions of that. I actually met a man uh, at a conference when we lived in Seattle who claimed that he came from the hollow earth and he said a very interesting statement which is most other galactic races do not live on the surface of their planet they live in the interior hollow part of it because there's too many things from space that impact on the surface like the like there's been legends that talk about the world's been destroyed polar shifts everything has to start over again and that this happens you know every so many hundred thousands of years so this is the reason why the preference is to live in the hollow interior and then I spoke to a spiritual medium who channeled a Pleiadian for me and the Pleiadian said the same because I said well what if I was to go in a spacecraft and visit your planet they said well first of all we're in a different dimension and second of all water cannot exist on our planet so you would die if you came you could only go in your spiritual light body so and we live in the interior so it was the same thing so yeah so I'm aware of the network but I didn't know there was a city in Argentina also Uh, so so that's good there are many entrances in Argentina I don't think people know much about dimensional cities here like um, maybe only about Telos and Monyasta but yeah it's like quite new at least in the place where I live, which is Perth, uh, which is a small city. Mm-hmm. Um, and do you think that these skulls are in a way helping us to um, up- update or evolve our um, spiritual vehicles to be able to interact more during Aquarius age with uh, these other dimensions and these other veins that are in a way helping for the big shift. And Actually, the Pleiadian told me in 20 years we'll be there. Okay. And, I've, and I've received the same message from one of my guides called Argus, who says, Joshua, I'm who you become in your future in this lifetime. So I said, you are? So tell me, what's going to happen? Oh, I'm sorry, mm-hmm. I can't tell you nothing, because if I tell you, then you won't become me. True. So, but, but the key to the understanding of how this is possible is when you talk, and I'm going to come back to your question about the skulls. When you talk, yeah. as I do with spiritual mediums, with the spirits, they say where we are, there is no time and space. Now, that's a very profound comment because it means we are always living in the simultaneous now, that in one moment, everything that ever has been will be or, or is going on now is happening in that same moment and that there is only one space too. So, mm-hmm. you know, like a lot of times we think, uh, oh, these spiritual beings, they're very far away from us. No, they're existing in the same space, just a different vibration. That's all that's separating us. So if you develop your spiritual gifts, that's how you know, oh yeah, I got uh, unseen visitors around me. You know, like when I give a lecture, uh, the people will watch me and I'll go, will you shut up? I'm not going to talk about that yet because I'm hearing someone behind me who's saying, there's someone there. You got to you got to talk about this. It's very important for them. So it's mm-hmm. like I'm speaking and have an internal dialogue going on at the same time. But nobody knows that unless, you know, I make a comment to whoever's behind me. But anyway, getting back to your question on the skulls, I believe that they're the greatest gift that they have for right now is that when people go to see them they are activating all of their gifts or their the Mm -hmm. energy that they're broadcasting they're helping the person to become more in touch with their divine presence now of course it's not going to happen for everyone because some people don't want it they Mm -hmm. it's like my mother said you know i don't understand all these crazy things you're doing but i love you and as long as you're happy then i have don't have a problem with 